Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The section of God's Word that is the basis for our Easter Sunday sermon is a single verse from 1 Peter chapter 1. It's verse 3. I would invite you to read that verse along with me. Let's read together. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is the word of our God. What did you hope to find here this morning? Maybe some of you hoped to come here and find a beautifully decorated church. Maybe you hoped to come here and to be able to sing some beautiful Easter hymns. Maybe you came here hoping to see some familiar faces, some family members, some friends who said they were going to be here this morning. And maybe some of you came here hoping to find some peace, maybe some answers, maybe some inspiration, some guidance, some direction in a life that at times seems to be spinning out of control. What did you hope to find here this morning? Many times our hopes are based upon our past experiences. Maybe you hope to find certain things here this morning because this isn't the first Easter service that you've been to. You've been to a lot of other ones, and so you kind of know what to expect. At least you think you do. Or maybe your hope is based upon what somebody said to you. That somebody invited you. Somebody said that there was going to be beautifully decorated church, that there was going to be songs, there were going to be hymns, and that there was going to be a message about Easter that had something more than just chocolate bunnies and brightly colored eggs but a message of Easter that talked about a man who gives us living hope and lasting peace and real purpose in life and so here you are this morning with all of those different hopes well I've got some good news for you this morning because no matter why you're here, no matter what brought you here, this morning is a day of hope. Jesus' resurrection from the dead, a living Jesus gives you a living hope. And kind of strangely, this living hope, it begins in a place of death. It begins in a place where you might expect that hope usually ends. It takes us to a cemetery, a cemetery located outside of the city of Jerusalem. A Sunday morning some 2,000 years ago, a Sunday morning where the week leading up to that Sunday had been festive and it had been frantic in a lot of ways. You see, Jerusalem, with its kind of small population, during that week became a city that was packed full of people that had traveled from all around the world to be there for the week's long celebration of what is called the Passover. But this week's festivities have been underlined with controversy and conflict. You see, there was a man that came to that city, a man that a whole lot of people were thinking was the great deliverer of Israel. A man who people said that for the last three years had been performing miracle after miracle, healing people, and even claiming to raise dead people back to life. This man even said he was the Son of God. And as the crowds that flocked to him got larger and larger, the religious leaders of the Jews felt more and more threatened. And so they finally decided that this man, Jesus, needed to go. And so on Thursday, they had him arrested. On Friday, they had him crucified. And Friday evening, they took his lifeless body off the cross, and they quickly put him in a tomb in a cemetery just outside the city of Jerusalem. There were a few women who went to that cemetery just three days later some followers of Jesus. And what did they hope to find when they went there? Well, their past experiences had told them that you do not go to the cemetery 
to see if the person is still there. You go to the cemetery because you know that the person is still going to be there. But these women, when they showed up at that cemetery, they found that the large rock that had once blocked Jesus' tomb had been rolled away, allowing them to look inside and see that Jesus' body was not there. Now their past experience told them that one of two things must have happened. That either Jesus' body had been stolen or somebody had moved Jesus' body. And so you find Mary, one of Jesus' followers, distraught, looking for some answer, looking to this man who was standing next to her. And she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, just tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. But the man standing next to Mary was the man that she was looking for. This was Jesus. The women had come hoping to find a dead body. But instead they found a living Jesus who gave hope that Jesus was not dead, but that Jesus was alive. That Jesus had done exactly as they had hoped he would do, exactly as he had said. Exactly as he had repeatedly and specifically had told them. Jesus said about himself, he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Now you look at those words. Is there anything cryptic about that? It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? It's about as straightforward as me saying, on Tuesday I'm going to work. Straightforward. Jesus said about himself, he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. As difficult as it may have been for them to believe, these words... They were not difficult for them to understand. Jesus did exactly as he had said. The one who once was dead now was alive. You can only imagine the joy, the relief, the happiness of when his followers saw him standing before them. It was a joy that was not just simply that they were so glad to have their teacher and their friend back among the living. It was even a greater joy than just the reassurance that they weren't crazy for believing all of these seemingly crazy things that Jesus had said to them. It was peace and confidence and joy and happiness that came from knowing that Jesus had done what he had said he was going to do, not just in rising from the dead, but in dying for them to bring salvation to the world. You see, this was so much more than just something personal for them. It's personal for us as well. Because Jesus died in order to bring you and me freedom from the guilt and the condemnation of sin. To bring us the confidence of life eternal in heaven. Jesus has died for you. Now, I realize at this point, there might be some people that would say, well, hold on for a second. I mean, you can say whatever you want, but, but I don't need somebody to die for me. I'm doing just fine by myself. And I totally understand that because I don't think there's a single one of us here that wants to think of ourselves as causing somebody else pain and certainly not to be the cause of somebody's death. But the fact remains that sin requires payment. And the Bible makes it very clear what that payment is to be. The wages of sin is death. Because of our failures to be what God asks us to be, because we have not always been patient with our children, because we have not always been loving and understanding with our spouse, because we have not always thought the best of our neighbor, because we have failed to love the people around us as Christ asks us to, because of our sins and our failures, we have to pay the price. The wages of sin is death. Every sin requires payment. 
Eternal separation from God. And now here's the choice. Either you pay the price or somebody else has to pay it for you. Now there are probably a lot of people that would just ignore it. But that works just about as well as you getting a bill in the mail, throwing it in the garbage, and then pretending like it doesn't exist. If you haven't figured it out, you still owe that money. It doesn't go away just because you can't see it. But you see, that's why Jesus came into this world. Jesus came to pay the wages of our sin. As the very Son of God, He lived a, a sinless, perfect life in our place. He willingly went to the cross, as we once again remembered on Friday. And He willingly went there to suffer the separation from God that we deserve for our sins. Yes, the wages of sin is death, but that verse goes on to say this, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. God gives the payment of sin to you and to me as a gift. He gives it to us through faith. He promises that all of those who trust in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. He gives to us that payment for Freedom from the guilt and punishment of sin. Freedom to live in confidence of knowing that just as He has risen from the dead, so also we have eternal life in heaven. That's the living hope that you heard that disciple Peter talk about in the verse that you read along with me this morning. A man who saw the resurrected Jesus and later on wrote, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Dear friends, that is the hope of Easter. Did you notice what that living hope is based on? It is based on the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. A living Jesus gives to you Living hope. So what does that living hope mean? What does that living hope look like? Well, let me ask you this question. Have you ever been stood up before? You know, somebody tells you that they're going to be somewhere at a specific time and meet you there, and then they just don't show up. Now, I'm not asking everybody to reveal the saddest story of their dating history, okay? Not here for that, but... It's a little disappointing. I mean, your hopes are quickly dashed and replaced with disappointment when that person doesn't show up. And whether they've done it once, and especially if they've done it repeatedly, the next time that they tell you that they're going to be there at that specific time, you're probably going to have a pretty hard time believing that they're going to do what they say. Hope and trust really go hand in hand, don't they? You only have hope in those things that a hope can be based on something that is trustworthy, that is solid, that is certain, that somebody is faithful and powerful to do what they have said. On Easter morning, Jesus did not stand up anybody. Jesus did exactly as he had said. Even though the situation may have seemed impossible, the situation may have seemed hopeless to those, those followers of his who saw his lifeless body placed in that grave, and yet Jesus did what he said. And dear friends, you can be sure that Jesus is never going to stand you up either. When you look to God's word and you see the promises that God has made to you, you can be sure that he will do what he has said. Easter assures you of the fact. A marriage that looks hopelessly irreparable. A relationship with an adult son or daughter that has been stressed over years and years of difficulty. Deteriorating health, a frustrating job, a living in a world that seems to grow more and more violent all of the time. Look to the promises that God has made to you in the Bible. And know that God will always do exactly as He has promised to you. 
That is the living hope that God has given to you. A living hope that even allows you to stand in a cemetery alongside the graveside of a fellow Christian. A living hope that gives you hope-filled grief. To know that although there is sadness in that separation, that it is only temporary. Because through Jesus' resurrection, he has transformed death into the doorway that rescues his people to the glory of his heavenly home. This morning and this afternoon, there are going to be a whole lot of kids, maybe some adults that get these. You see what it is? It's a big chocolate bunny, okay? I remember getting one of these when I was a child and being very, very excited. I looked at it and I thought, this is going to be the best thing ever. I've got days and days of meals here. <laughs> and then I bit into it and guess what I found? It's hollow. There's nothing inside of it. What I thought was going to be so great for such a long time, I realized that once you got past the thin chocolate shell, there wasn't much there. Our world holds out a lot of chocolate bunnies that promises that it will give you hope. It tells you to look for that hope in relationships and in careers and in Bigger houses and faster cars and more money and optimism based on optimism. But you know what? It might bring some temporary joy and satisfaction, but it inevitably is always hollow. And it always leaves you looking for the next chocolate bunny. But it'll never satisfy you. Dear friends, on this Easter... Put away the chocolate bunnies because Jesus has given you a living hope. A living hope that is solid and certain. That is not based upon the things of this ever-changing world, but is based upon a God who is powerful and faithful. A Savior who is willing to give his life in your place. A Savior who not even death can prevent him from doing what he has promised to do for you. That is the living hope that is based upon the fact that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.